being for this, right? So you're gonna go ahead and stand here and face me. So when we squat, the first thing we wanna do, where do the problems happen in the squat? They almost always happen in the bottom, either achieving depth, or losing the low back, etc. So we always start the squat without the bar, just an air squat. So we're gonna have Nicole take a stance with her heels kind of under her shoulders and her toes out about 30 degrees, a little bit more toe angle. Just like that. This is her stance. She looks down, she kind of takes a snapshot of that, and every time she squats, she's gonna use this stance. Now, put your hands together like you're going to pray. I want you to squat down and put your elbow inside your kneecap and hold the bottom position of the squat. Good. A little bit deeper, 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 right there, and shove the knees out. Good. So this is the bottom position of the squat. Hip crease is parallel or just below the kneecap. Knees are tracking out over the toes, that's why we turned her toes out, and she's very horizontal. Probably more than some of you have pictured in your mind. This is, a, this is a hips event, she's horizontal. Now, I want you to just push that up and stand. Just drive your hips up and stand all the way up. Very good. So when I squat, I want to use as much of me as possible, right? So in order to do that, where do I have more of me? Back here, right in my hips. I got a lot more muscle mass going on there than I do in the upper back. So when I'm down in the bottom of the squat, when I want to go come up, what does everyone want to do? Ah, this thing's heavy, high school football, look up to go up, crank my neck and just try and pull up the bar. No, I don't want to do that. I want to keep the eyes down and I want to use where there's more muscle mass down here in the posterior chain and drive the hips up, right? So go back down again, shove the knees out, eyes are down. And this time I'm just going to put a little pressure on her and drive up against my hand and stand. Come all the way up, just like that. Go down again, head is down and drive up here. Good. So when you're teaching this moment, this, this movement, the, one of the things you need to look for as a coach is do I have hip drive right out of the gate? Because nine out of 10 people would not do that. They would not think of driving their hips up. And so when I'm teaching coaches or I'm value, evaluating coaches at the seminar, the number one thing I watch people miss is they have no idea what that sensation or what that should look like, right? They see the person go down, maybe they leaned over correctly, whatever, and the back angle comes up like this on the way up, right? Which, which is not what we want. So you want to watch as you're teaching this for the hips to be the first thing to move up, okay? So now she's going to approach the bar, come up to the bar. Good. When we set up the bar, we want it about sternum height. This is good, maybe a little high, but it'll work just fine because the bar is not going to sit high up on the traps. Right? It's going to sit down beneath the spine of the scapula. So take your right hand, reach up over your left shoulder or whichever, and just kind of feel on the lateral side out here, out here, that little bony ridge. Connor can kind of help you find it. That's the spine of your scapula, right? Your scapula, well, the physical therapist guys know better than me, but there they are floating in fascia, not connected, right? And the spine of that thing is up there. And we have found that that is just beneath that is the best place to put that bar where it can be stable, won't move around and cause me to have to shove my hips back and lean over, right? So that's the position. So she's gonna come up to the bar, sternum height, she'll take her pinky fingers, put it on the inside break of the knurling, and she's actually gonna go with a thumbless grip, right? Meaning the thumb's gonna go on top of the bar. This isn't an end-all, be-all, but it's something that we want you to, to understand. Why would she want to go with a thumbless grip? Well, because what we find is that most people, when they go thumbs around, think in their brain, one, their, their wristband, but they think in their brain of holding the bar up with their hands, right? I don't want her to hold the bar up with her hands. I want the back to support the bar. So the thumbs over does a couple things. One, it leaves the wrist neutral, right? When the wrist is in overextension, we can have some issues going on, include some elbow tendonitis, not to mention pain here, that kind of stuff. But two, in her brain, she's thinking of the weight on her back. Okay, so step one, she kind of grabs the bar just like that. Now she's going to duck underneath and put it just beneath that bony ridge. Right there, tighten your upper back. And this is the bar position or the rack position for the squat. You can see that her upper back is nice and tight. And we want her hands really as tight as they can be in order that she could, without having her wrist bent. So if she could come in more, it would be even better because more muscle mass would kind of bunch up here and give the bar a better place to sit. So want the hands as tight as they can and then, and then it tight on the back. So come out, uh, duck underneath, come back. We'll let you stretch it out for a second, right? And then we'll start fresh. Mm -hmm. This time we'll take it out with the bar. So pinky out here, thumb on top, kind of get this meaty por portion of the palm up. Good, duck underneath, low on the back. It's not too low, come down right there. So you can kind of feel it just beneath that. Tight upper back, go ahead and stand up. Take a step back and get your stance. 
Good. This is the same stance she had before, and she's going to have, and you're, she's going to do, and you're going to have your lifters do the same thing she did before, except now there's a few differences. One, she's not going to stop at the bottom. Before I had her go down, hold the position, I pointed stuff out, I told her to lead up with your hips, and she was just hanging out down there. Now she's going to go down and come right back up. And two, doesn't matter for her because she's got some pretty good range of motion, but for some of you guys that are tight, she's got to really think about shoving the knees out. Because if the adductors are tight, this is hard. And when you're under load, what happens? The knees want to valgus, they want to come in. So she's got to actively push them out. So I want you to look down at the ground in front of you, take a big breath of air and hold it, sit back, lean over and squat. And drive your hips up, okay? So she led with the bar out of the bottom, right? I want you to think about leaving your chest down, Nicole, and driving your butt to the ceiling. Breathe in and hold, do it again. Sit back, lean over, drive your butt up. There you go, right? And she's exaggerating it right now, but that's okay. We got to get this across into her head. The first one, she came up with the bar. Everyone does. Do it again. Hips up. Good. Get that little pause out of the bottom. Just go down and come right up. One speed. Knees out. Hips up. Good. Still stopped a little bit. Get a little bounce out of the bottom. And up. Good. And we'll do one more. Hips up. Good. Walk it in. Feel it hit the upright. She doesn't even need to look for it. If she set up her rack correctly, she just goes in and she goes down. Okay. So one of the things you guys know, just because you're of above average intelligence and you're above average intelligence because you're at the strength coast, so you're smart people, but you know that you're not supposed to do things with rounded backs, right? And you know if you've done it before that that's when you get inflammation or you get some type of tweak or you aggravate some nerd and then you had a lot, a lot of pain, right? It doesn't mean that you can't ever do anything with a rounded back, right? You've all watched the strongman dudes, guys pick up stuff. Like, it, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying though is that a lumbar and extension is a better force transmitter and, and, it, and you're going to have more success of not having injuries happening, right? So at the bottom of the squat, you'll notice she was stopping just a little bit right she not like coming to a complete stop but she wasn't it wasn't a there was no stretch reflex happening she was going down kind of pausing and then driving up like two different mo uh, movements one of the things we want her to do is a breathing technique called the valsalva maneuver right and what the valsalva maneuver is is it's me pulling a whole bunch of air down into the bottom of my stomach and then going to exhale it but cutting it off thus filling this chamber this segment with air and anchoring the back end. How do I keep the back from doing this? By using my abs, right? So the way I like to teach people is I say, think about stopping a cough, right? So breathe in, take a big breath of air down to the bottom of your stomach, and then go to exhale the cough, make an audible noise and hold it. <gasps> like that, right? And all of you can feel your abs get hard. Go ahead, do it, right? Boom, her abs are hard. So if you do that at the top of the squat, set the abs and your toe angles correctly and you sit back and your lumbar is anchored in and as you go down you shove your knees out to get to depth your adductors are going to start stretching 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 they're going to hit the limit of their instability and they're going to want to go like that and what are you going to feel boing a little bounce out of the squat so when you squat if you about if you put the set the lumbar and then you take your valsalva and as you go down you shove the knees out you get a little bounce out of the bottom, right? So we're going to do another set of five and she's going to work on that. So pinky's there, thumb on top, thumb on top, duck underneath, put it down here. Good. Stand up, take a step back, toes out a little bit more. Good. Eyes down. Now breathe in and brace, Valsalva, and now squat. Shove your knees out hard and come right up. There you go. Do it again. Sit back, hips up. It's just fine. Do five. Good. And if you need to open your mouth to get a bunch of air, it's okay. Good. Knees out. Come up. And final. Knees. Good. Walk it in. Feel it hit the upright. And down. Okay. So now that's 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 the that's it basically. And we're gonna go through the condensed version of that. But as you're teaching this or you're doing this and you have new lifters come in. Everything starts here. Everything starts at parallel, right? You'll have people come in and they say, well, I can't squat to parallel, right? I can. And you'll have 50 year old guys love to go, that's deep as it goes, deep as it goes, right? And then you say, have you taken a dump 
in the last week? And he's like, yeah, no prayer. <laughs> Got terrible bowel movements. So he's like, he's like, well, yeah. I'm like, so you sat on the toilet, right? And they're like, well, well yeah, but that's different. Deep as it goes, right? And I said, okay, come over here and sit on this bench, right? And then they, they sit down on the bench. Said, okay, well, you can go that deep. That's not quite parallel, but it's pretty cool. Now just sit on that, on that thing. And they go down and they sit on that thing. And, and they're like, oh. Wow, I'm like, yeah, see, that toilet's been doing you some good all this time. No, but, but you need to make sure you find that, right? And sometimes, you know, Nicole's flexible, whatever, I can move around. Sometimes you have to take the person, pull their knee out, shove their butt down, and push them into position, right? I had a kid one time with barely any dorsiflexion in his, in his ankles, and he would go down to squat, and as soon as he went to squat, it would just fall backwards, right? He'd go and fall backwards. Um, and so they were trying some different things, trying to have them, you know, squat to a box, do this, do that. And then finally, I just handed him a weight one day and had him squat. And I'm like, use this weight so you don't fall over. And so he's going down, right? And his ankles want to push him back, and he's like this. And then boom, down, here he is down here at parallel. And the problem was he wouldn't lean over, right? He wouldn't lean over and get some mass going that way. So he's even, so, and he did have a dorsiflexion issue. It wasn't fake. So I'm telling you this to say, you have to get these things right at the air squat and then right with the empty bar. And the second it starts falling apart, it's either you need to fix it and teach them or now it's a total weight strength issue and their form's falling apart because it's too heavy, right? But you ha if you're not starting out from a correct squat position, it's only gonna, get, only gonna get worse, okay? So now let's do the abbreviated kind of thing. This is what you guys will do on the platform. So stand and face me again. First thing you're gonna do is have your lifter take their stance. So she puts her heels underneath her shoulders, points her toes out, heels out just a little bit more. To, oh, toes are fine, bring toes back in, heels out just a little bit. There you go, just like that. Hands together, she's gonna to squat down, shove her knees out with her elbows. Good. You're gonna show her that her knees are tracking out over her toes, that will reinforce that she always has a little bit of toe angle, and then you're gonna show her that she's horizontal. You're gonna make sure she's looking down, and then you're just gonna tap her or your lifter right here on the sacrum and say, push that up and stand. And you want that to happen. You never, as soon as you start teaching this, you never want the lifter bringing up the upper back, right? You want them from rep number one, from the first time they go down to be thinking hip drive, okay? Now you're gonna have her go down again, shove the knees out, keep the eyes down, and you're just gonna apply a little pressure. I'm not gonna knock her over, I'm just gonna put my hand on her sacrum, I'm gonna say drive up against my hand. Boom, now she can kind of feel what that sensation is of leading with the hips, right? Go down, we'll do it one more time and press up. Good, just like that. Now we take the lifter to the bar. She goes to the bar, you set the rack so it's sternum height. She takes a grip. Some of you guys may be tight in here. You may have to have the grip super wide. You may find a guy so, so tight that he's all the way out here and when he goes underneath his wrist still bends. Is this the most important thing we need to be focused on? No. Does it matter over time? Sure. Right now, does it matter? Not really. If she can do it right, might as well have her do it right. But if Jeremy's under here like this on set one, that's fine. What do I care about? I care about hip drive. I care about parallel. I care about back angle, right? I care about the big foundational stuff. This is, this is a side note, okay? So back here, back there, she ducks underneath. You kind of take the lifter, just feel beneath their scapula. Have her go. Tell her to pinch your fingers with the shoulder blades. Stand up. Step back. And now what are you looking for as the coach? You're looking for hip drive. So once they're here, you're gonna tell them it's the same thing you did in the air squat, but you're gonna remind them of two things. One, they're not gonna stop at the bottom. And two, they're gonna um, have to think about pushing their knees out because their elbows are busy. And that you may be like, okay, Grant, I get it. But that you will see with guys that are tight, gals that are tight, that is a really big deal. It'll, it'll keep them from hitting depth. So she takes a big breath of air and holds it. Sits back, leans over and squats. Knees out, come up. Good, and now you're just looking for hip drive. Go ahead, hips up, good. And two more. It's fine, good. And walk it in, feel it hit the uprights and down. 